I'm often asked the question, are leaders born or can they be developed? It's a really interesting question. Yes, I think there are natural leaders out there, but however, we can learn to be leaders and we can learn to be great leaders if we want to put in the time to develop ourselves. So it is an interesting question, but the thing here is this, how do you do that? And what I'm going to be sharing today are the five steps to develop your leadership skills. Let's discuss. Welcome to Leadership is Changing. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change. This is taking your leadership to another level by finding the balance between executive excellence and personal well-being through stories that inspire real change. It's time to adapt in our fast-moving world when leadership is changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Hey there, listeners. Welcome to the Ask Dennis Freestyle episode where I'm asked a question by our listeners or I share my thoughts, insights, and experiences from working with many leaders around the globe. Hey, it's always great being with you. And today I want to share this story or the actual kind of message around the five steps to develop your leadership skills. Because that question is really important. Are leaders born or can they be developed? As I said before, it's a really interesting question. One that someone that people do struggle with. And people think that they can't be a leader because they're not they're not a natural leader or born leader in their eyes. When most of us hear the word leadership, we usually think of political officials, CEOs, C suite level people in a a, as an executive team, military commanders, and even athletes. When I say athletes, you can think about of a sporting team and uh, how there may be a captain of the team, but yet again, there might be a leadership group within that team as well. In rugby that we know that we have a captain of the team that the referee, the official, will actually always go to, but we also have different leaders, and they may have actually five different leaders within that group, be the captain and four others, and they tend to sort of talk together as leaders about the direction of the game, about the direction of where they want to go next, but also the direction of the team. While it's true you need good leadership skills to excel in occupations that I've shared before, like the political official, CEOs, and so forth, leadership is a valuable skill that everyone from any type of role or background can use for their benefit and the benefit of others. As I said before, that question around are leaders born or can they be developed? I see that actually, well, it comes down to what time that you want to put in and how you want to develop yourself. Author and speaker John C. Maxwell shares in his book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. He talks about the different laws in relation to leadership. One of those laws is the law of the lid. And when I say the law of the lid, if you think about a trash can and there's a lid on top of that trash can, Whatever's in that trash can can't get out because there is a lid holding it down. Now, the thing here is that if the lid represents your leadership skills and capabilities and experiences, then your organization's success and their ability to do things is really determined by the lid that is on them. If we can get you to develop your leadership skills and capabilities and give you more experiences to actually develop more, then we can lift that lid because you're going to grow as a leader. And as we lift that lid, it allows others below you to actually lift their game as well and actually grow in the organization. Have you ever heard of the terminology, when the tide rises, all boats rise? It's the same here. If we can get you to develop your leadership skills and capabilities to lift the lid, then everyone else around you will actually lift as well. So that's just explaining a little bit about that law. If you want to check out that book, do check it out. It's the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John C. Maxwell. John Maxwell has actually written about 80 different books, and he speaks as well. And I've had the pleasure of meeting him several times, been to his house a couple of times and, uh, in Florida in the U.S., and a wonderful man who actually shares a lot of in- interesting insights around leadership and personal development as leaders. You see, for a lot of people, the effective leadership or being an effective leadership, a leader doesn't come naturally for most of us, right? It doesn't. 
However, there are several methods that you can use to build and refine those leadership skills to help you lift that lid. Now, what we only need to do is several things. One of them is we need to understand and discover the leader within you. And we need to try some different techniques to help actually boost your leadership skills. And here are some of them. Here are the five of them that I think. Number one would be for you to strive for excellence. You know, part of being a successful leader is your ability to set the bar for others. It's about how you can be a high performer, how you can have excellence and drive and strive for that excellence. You can be a really great uh, role model uh, by consistently seeking ways to improve yourself and aspire to excellence. Now, there's a key word there, consistently. And I think what we need to do is we need to actually consistently do this and show up. You see, the hallmark of leadership is excellence. If you can work on honing on your existing skills and developing new ones, that would be a great thing for you to do. I think the other thing you should do is actually look at and watch other leaders who are successful and learn from them, understand what they do really well. And the other thing in striving for excellence is that if you are consistently or constantly reading and listening and watching things, that's going to help develop you. Things like books, things like podcasts, white papers, articles, YouTube clips, videos. What I'm saying to you here is newspapers could be another one through articles. Understand what's happening in the marketplace. Understand what's happening around you. But also understand what you need to do as a leader to develop yourself and grow. I've always gone and developed myself as a leader. I've actually invested myself in hundreds of thousands of dollars over time to actually go and and be a great leader. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go out and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm not saying that at all. But there is things available out there. You can online find out and look for podcasts like this one, books, audio books, if you don't want to read the physical book, Kindles, white papers, you can get through things like the Harvard Business Review and others. Articles, you can look at different newspapers, but if you Google things and search for things, you'll be surprised on what you can actually find. So number one there was strive for excellence. Number two is focus on your vision and then set goals around that. It's your vision that I'm talking about. Your vision around what you might want to consider and accomplishing in different areas of your life and your role as a leader. And then what I think you should do is then set some goals around that to help you achieve that vision. I think if you can think about the leader that you want to be, where you are today and understand the current state or where you are, but then the desired state or the end picture where you want to end up and be that kind of, you know, that vision of that leader you want to be, one that you want to be known as, one that you want people to talk about and say, this is the kind of leader that person is. Then I think you need to start thinking about certain things. To help you focus on your vision and set goals, I would actually set goals that you can measure and work on that are going to help your performance and your progress and your activity. One thing I would say to you around that is just make sure that they are goals and they're not tasks. Now, what do I mean by that? Some people say to me, oh, I've set my goals for the year. I've set my goals for the month. I go, great. What are they? Show me. And they show me, but they're actually tasks. They're not actually goals. You see, If you set the goal, the action plan, the tasks are the things that actually help the goal happen. Don't get mixed up between the two. Because you see, if it's just tasks, it's really interesting. Here's a clue to help you understand what you might need to do or understand if it's a goal versus a task. I ask people this question. Is this goal, do you know how to get to this goal? In other words, do you know how to achieve it? If the answer is yes, then I just say, then it's a task. If you don't know how to achieve your goal, Yes, you're going to work on it, you're going to put plans together and so forth, but you don't know if it's actually achievable because it actually could be a stretch or whatever, then that is a goal. The other thing I would say under focusing on your vision and setting goals is actually break up the larger goals into smaller ones. So then you're doing bite-sized kind of things. Remember to celebrate your successes and also maintain your motivation. Those success things that I talk about, about celebrating them, are really, really important for all of us to think about and do as individuals. The other thing to help you around that whole area of actually developing your focus and vision setting goals is learn to identify and use all resources in the pursuit of your goal. Now, those resources could be anything. 
It could be people. It could be tools to help you do that. Whatever it is, it could be finance. Now, when you make your plans to reach your goal, always work with the resources you have in your current circumstances rather than developing plans based on circumstances or resources that are sort of ideology and may not get there. Now, don't get me wrong. What I just said before is that as long as the goal is big and you may not know how to get there. So you may need to go and find other resources that are available to you to help you reach your goal because you still can go out and find those resources. That's why it's important. And the other thing I would say here is be willing to refine those plans and those goals based on the progress that you're moving towards your dream or that goal. Now, the thing I would say here is that dreams and goals can be actually set in cement, but the plans around those things are what I call in sand. And we can actually review and reflect on those things and adjust as you see fit. So the thing here is that second area is to focus on your vision and set goals. Number one was strive for excellence. All right, let's go to the third item. The third item is to develop your people skills. Now, we're talking about leadership skills, but we're also talking about your people skills. See, leaders are known for their ability to inspire others to work towards a common goal. For some leaders, they think that we are there to motivate people. We should be hiring motivated people, and our role as a leader is is to inspire them. To be successful at inspiring others to work with you, I think it's really important to develop your people skills and emotional intelligence. Here are some aspects within this to talk about here to help you do that. Learn how to listen. Doing this is really going to help you establish a connection and build rapport and trust so others are more likely going to follow your lead and help you. Building that rapport and trust is really important. It takes a while to actually build rapport, credibility and trust. But you know what? You can lose it within seconds if you're not careful. People don't care about you or your title, whether you're a leader, manager, CEO, whatever. They don't care what that is. What they want to know about and what they do care about is that you care about them, that you have an interest in them, that you listen to them, and that you're actually present with them and you accept who they are. You know what? Once they understand that you care about them, they will go the extra mile for you. The other thing I would say around this whole area is about helping others to be their best. That's part of our role as a good leader, is motivating others towards positive change. In fact, we need to lead them through that change and bring people on the journey. I remember at times where people have got upset because people have gone ahead and resigned from a role. And all I would say to them is, isn't that our role, and isn't that our role as a leader to actually help develop people and give them opportunities to grow so then they go off to go and do other things? In other words, when they go off to do other things, their success is our success. The other thing I would say here is seek input from others. When you're thinking about your goals and plans to help reach your objectives or whatever they are. Now, give others a stake in those results by seeking their opinion. If you get to ask people and you listen to what they say and you take on and then you determine what you're wanting to do, you know, people are going to be there motivated to help you be successful. So number three is actually develop your people skills to enable you to be an effective leader. Number four, be passionate and always maintain a positive attitude. Now, when I say maintain, always maintain, make sure it's real, that you've got a positive attitude that's real and authentic. Because if it's not, then people's BS radar is going to be up and they're going to call you out. They're going to be able to see it. Now, most of us take our cues from others in social situations. So you can teach others to have a positive attitude and to be passionate in their efforts by doing so yourself. In other words, you show others how to do that. Maintain an upbeat attitude and giving your best effort to help energize the entire team so everyone is able to accomplish more regardless of the circumstances you might be facing. Because there's going to be times where it's not easy, but you need to maintain that upbeat attitude, those vibes. People want to work for someone who's positive and energized. They don't want to work for a knuckle dragger, as I call it. People who are negative, feeling sorry for themselves and pity city and have no energy. People don't want to work for them. They want to work for people who have got positive energy. That's who they want to work for. They want to have fun doing that. So number four, be passionate and always maintain a positive attitude. Number five, 
This is the final one of those five steps of developing your leadership skills. The ability to communicate and connect with people. Everyone can communicate, however, not everyone connects with the people. There is an episode one where we talk about the power of communicating and connecting with people. That's where I actually interviewed Christopher Luxon, who was the former CEO of Air New Zealand, on that actual episode. And if you haven't epi- re- uh, listened to episode one, go ahead and do that. It's a really cool episode and what he shared. But how many times have you seen a leader or a speaker up front and they don't even have the audience with them? In other words, what I mean is that they failed to connect. In fact, they're just a talking head up front and they are not resonating with the people. So in other words, the audience isn't able to relate to them. And there's so many times that leaders and speakers and so forth can actually lose the audience. The important thing here is that you need to understand your audience and make sure that you're talking to them, not talking at them, talking with them. Use storytelling to help people resonate and find relevancy in what you are speaking about. In other words, make it memorable. Make it where people understand it, but also they just feel like they're part of it. Make sure your message is clear and that you speak clearly as well. And those for, you, for those of you who uh, get nervous when speaking, Remember to breathe, because if you breathe, pause and breathe, then what will happen is that you will slow things down. Those of you who are nervous when you're speaking, you tend to hold your breath, which means you start to speak faster. And as you speak faster, you start to lose the audience. If you are speaking with somebody one-on-one, make sure that you are present and listening to that person. Be there in the moment and make sure that you're talking with them. All right, listeners. In summary, that's the five steps to develop your leadership skills. Number one, strive for excellence. Number two, focus on your vision and set goals to help you get there. Number three, develop your people's skills. Number four, be passionate and always maintain a positive attitude. And number five, the ability to communicate and connect with people. You see, taking time out to develop your leadership skills can seriously increase the amount of success that you can experience in all areas of your life. It will allow you to raise that lid, as I mentioned earlier on. You will help others to lift their game as well. And you're going to be a more effective and impactful leader. Hey, listeners, it's always a pleasure being with you. Thanks for joining. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you for listening to this episode of Leadership is Changing with your host, Dennis Giannoutsas. Each week, we and our guests provide information and insights through exploring leading change, inspiring executives and leaders to adapt and lead a bigger game in a fast-moving world. 